Hi everyone, how are you? Um, I see people are joining us. This is our first uh, live video. Uh, just a quick introduction. I'm Nellie, the marketing director for Timeless Treasures and Dear Stella. And I am, like many of you, I'm here today in my home studio. And um, we're super excited to share this project um, from Tony and Jenny from Wing and Prayer Design. They'll be joining us shortly, um, but before they do, welcome. We hope everyone is safe and well at home. Um, going live is very new for us, and we're looking forward to learning more about you and getting to know you. Um, so just some housekeeping. Um, I will be checking your comments and questions while Tony and Jenny will walk you through the project, so they'll be getting on quite shortly. Um, and for any of you looking for the project, I've posted it here, very, very tech. Um, it's uh, Timeless Treasures uh, for Facebook. Uh, the project is gonna be on Facebook at uh, facebook.com at uh, TT Fabrics. And we will doing the, we'll be doing a correlating live video on Instagram, um, which I put over here. And don't forget to tag us because we wanna see your projects um, and how far along you've gotten. Um, uh, Every Monday, we'll be, loasting, we'll be loading the pattern on Facebook. And then on Tuesday, Tony and Jenny will be joining us for showing you how to go through some of the steps and some tips and tricks. They've got a lot planned for you. And for those of you not on Instagram, don't fret. We're going to post it on Facebook afterward. Um, and at the end of the sew along, of course, we're going to have a great giveaway that uh, Tony and Jenny have planned for you. So don't be shy. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions and share comments. I know Tony and Jenny are very excited to do this and um, to get to know you better. So also, if there's some technical hiccups, just let us know. Um, again, it's our first time for both of us doing this and uh, I'm gonna get them on uh, right now. So just hold on. Okay, there you are. Hey. <laughs> oh, social distancing. This is going to be hard. <laughs> so, are you two ready? We yeah. are ready. Okay. Good morning. Good. So, I will let you take it away. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Jen and I are here at my lake house in Council Grove. Jen lives actually 45 miles away in, in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, we both feel pretty safe from the, the virus. We've been basically quarantining ourselves since our trip to New York. Um, and so we're, uh, but we're still practicing our distancing and all of our safe um, things, though we're working together. So we are so excited to show this to you today. Um, behind us, you'll get to see lots of pictures of the Canyon quilt as we span back and forth. And please be patient with us as it's our first time. So um, is there anything else, Nellie, you want us to bring up? We're going to show them some color combinations and the tools that, that we'll be using. Um, I just want to do some shout outs to our friends who are watching. We've got uh, So Inspired Quilt Shop. Hi, Tony from Viv. Hey. Uh, Nikki M. Baker Rogers, The Thimble House. Hi, Nora. Uh, Roseanne Duck. Loretta Pink. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, <laughs> all well, right. So shops I visited. Um, yep. So I'm going to go get in place here to show you the rulers. If you haven't um, already, the, you needed to go to our Facebook page. And here are our materials list. That's one thing that you should have downloaded. And then also the first part of the pattern, which is two pages. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to show you today is your rulers. Um, can you see those rulers, Nellie? No, no. I s Flip my yep. screen. Hold on. Flip your screen. There we go. <laughs> um, so Jen's going to get on the step stool to be a little taller here. So here is our rulers. Um, so basically you're going to be able to do this complete quilt using your standard six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. If you can see that okay. Mm -hmm. um, later on, you're going to uh, find that your six and a half inch square is very, very helpful. 
Um, if you do not have a long ruler that measures 24, if you have one that measures at least 18 and a half, that will be good. And then for any of you that Jen and I lovingly call this ruler, get your hand up there, Jen. Um, this is what we call Big Mama. This is, I believe, the largest creative grids ruler. It's the 20 and a half. And um, we're going to show you how to do this. But if you don't have one, um, if you have an 18 and a half or a 16 and a half, those will both be helpful too. So those are the tools that we'll be using throughout the process, just to give you a heads up on that. Of course, our mat and our trusty rotary cutter. Um, now coming into your shot is just some other colorations of... Um, of Ooh, those look great, Tony. Oh, aren't these pretty? So yeah. this is, of course, London Blues. Um, these are, this is in the stores right now, um, or if you have a collection. Um, this is such a great pattern to use your, I call it resource center, your stash, um, go in and collect. So these are printed cottons for Timeless from Wing and a Prayer. Um, and this is actually a combination of both our tapestry and our London Blues collection. You can see that Jen and I tend to like yeah. that same dusty cream. And there's a couple of the creams from um, Tranquility in there that were in our stash as well. And then all of the darker colors are all from London Blues. And it's fine because you can see that even though this piece has a light background, when you put it to this piece, it's still going to be very dark and have the contrast. So even if all of your pieces are not really dark, that's, that's perfectly fine too. And then over here we have, um, this is a collection coming out, but we've done collections for Timeless before in what we call these peacock colors. And this is a new collection that's coming out uh, later this year. It was actually to be introduced at Spring Market. It's called Fantasy. And it's gonna be a Tonga Treat collection, um, Fantasy, so you'll be able to actually get it on a 10 yard bolt put up. But um, we'll have an opportunity to show you the fantasy block of the month that will ship very late this year. Um, so anyway, here it gives you a little bit more of an idea of what we're going to be sewing with. And then let me grab today's collection from what we're going to be cutting. And, and also the, the collections that we're showing you, we have chosen eight light fat quarters and eight dark fat quarters. Um, there are six different options you can use with the 16 uh, block quilts. So that's what we have chosen to demonstrate on this so Jenny, you guys. The 16 block layout will give you a 60 by 60 finished quilt, correct? Um, yes. Yes. I believe yes. So. yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> My yes. pattern page wasn't close. <laughs> Actually, interesting enough, the 16-inch block oh, layout will allow you to make any of the layouts. So um, you can see all the smaller, when you've downloaded your page, like all of the smaller squares, these are all 16-block quilt layouts. So you can choose any of the options for that. So, so the 20, if you go to 20, you have less options. Um, if you go to 36, of course, you have, once again, all of the options to do. And so this collection is um, as a, what I'm going to be sewing on and Jen's going to be cutting and sewing on for first. Um, Jen, tell them about that. This is um, half our Nature's Lodge collection and half of our Canyon collection that are coming out here soon. Um, they're all pretty much neutral fabrics. So we've co collected all of those. Um, one thing to pick out when you are um, selecting your fabrics, if you don't have like eight different darks and eight different lights, you can repeat some of your prints. Um, just the more variety you have, the more prints you have, the more interesting your end result is going right. to be. And if you have to duplicate a print, I would highly recommend duplicating a piece that is, of course, multicolored versus a piece that would be darker, um, such as this green piece, is always going to pop more in the quilt um, so you can see. So if you do need to duplicate because you can't get out right now, um, you can see how this one is going to have lots of different cuts. It's such a beautiful boutique. And this one is from um, the Canyon Collection. And this beautiful green is from Nature's Lodge. Um, so there we just put that out so that you can see your lights and darks. Okay. So we're going to get ready to cut here. Um, so uh, Nellie, if there are some questions or any comments, you can take a minute to answer those while we get reset.
So just to, I, maybe you mentioned this already, uh, Tony and Jenny, you can use cottons or batiks. Yes. yes, you may use cotton prints or batiks. Either one will and work. And you're currently using. Famous. And you're and the, oh, and that quilt in the background is your canyon quilt using. This the, is yes. This is. This is Canyon, and those are some of the ones that we're going to be demonstrating. We've used part Canyon colors and part Nature's Lodge colors. Right. And then would you say for the lights, they have to be sort of the same creams or the same whites, or can you kind of blend both? What would you No, suggest? they just, yeah. here's a great opportunity the to darks see The darks, and Look okay, right here, here is what we're start getting our fat quarters in place to color or to cut. But you can see here that it doesn't have to just be creams. They can have color to them like here's some you can see the variety of lights that we have here they just need to be contrast to the dark colors so there's so you can square. see there's another example of a of the light that pine cone print which is not white or cream yeah and it's actually more interesting if you have values yeah. within that now that's not to say that if you have you know four yards of of a cream piece that you love you certainly can do all of your lights with the same piece. That's the beauty of this pattern. It's why we call it the magical serendipity block. Um, it was specially done for a fat quarter quilt um, that we used a treat collection. And a treat, uh, for those of you that don't know, is a, a timeless collection of 20 fabrics that coordinate together with lights, mediums, and darks. And um, that's what the Canyon collection is and also the fantasy collection um, that are from We in a Prayer for Timeless. Nellie, you could tell them about some other pieces. Okay, Tony's okay. gonna get in position to show you cutting. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's Wait, cutting. I, any, she has better, she has better tips than I do. <laughs> I was gonna take that camera. She's like, no, <laughs> the camera. Okay, <laughs> so. Yes, Tony is also the Timeless Treasures National Educator. So she does also teach classes around the country with these tips, tricks, and techniques if you are so wanting more. Yeah, so I do guild lectures and shops um, coming, in to, um, coming in to teach. So um, hello to all of my friends that are on watching. So the first thing I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna line up these fat quarters. And in the interest of time, we've pretty much done that. Um, so I've got my salvage edge. I don't cut my salvages off until I'm ready to remove them in the process of doing the quilt. And the reason I don't is my salvage, I think of it as my true north. I always know where my fabric, what's my running um, yardage. And so I don't remove my uh, salvage edges until that point. So I have now stacked up and I'm feeling really confident, Nellie, in my cutting today. So I'm going to cut through six layers. Wow. Uh, that's Power cutting, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not as confident a cutter, because this quilt is really, um, as long as you have all your basic skills, I think you'd be perfectly great in doing this quilt. It's a really a good skill builder because there's a couple opportunities to square up um, and it's large pieces, so it's very forgiving. So I'm going to just remove my salvage edge. So basically I have nothing that's really straight here. So I'm gonna just say, that I'm gonna remove that. So I'm gonna take this, hold it firmly, I'm gonna zip down there, and then I'm gonna pick this up. Now, do you see how I have just like a little sliver of this one piece there and bigger pieces of that? I just wanna be sure, these are gonna be trimmed up again, but I wanna be sure that I've gotten a cut on all of these. And even though there's a little salvage left, um, salvage edge on that one piece that was slivered, it's gonna be trimmed down later. So I'm not gonna worry about it because I know I have those. Now I'm gonna take my big long ruler and I could do this with my big square, but because I don't have, um, because some of you may not have the square, I wanted to show you using this basic ruler. So now I'm gonna turn this ruler this way and now I'm gonna align this edge here and then I'm gonna come up here and just see where's my shortest piece. Can you get in there, Jen, to see that? Mm -hmm. Do you see how I just have just a tiny little piece of some of those? So I'm gonna slide this ruler up if your fat quarters, again, are not a perfect 18 inches, don't panic. It's okay. And I'm going to square this top, and then I'm going to come back and do my side again. So I'm going to come across here. And once again, I'm going to kind of just pull these pieces out and make sure that I have six pieces. Four, five, six, I do. And then um, I think my ruler slid in showing you just a little bit. So now that I have a good squared edge, 
I'm going to go ahead and come back down and check my um, salvage. I thought that I had slid just a little bit there. Okay. So now I am ready to cut my base in the step one of the pattern. It says to lay your fat quarters out like this. Um, it's actually laying opposite direction here. So now I'm going to, um, in the, the way I'm gonna be cutting it is actually this piece of my binding over here is gonna be cut off. So I'm gonna lay my ruler down. Um, and can you see all that, Jen? Is mm -hmm. that a good position mm -hmm. for you? Yes. I'm gonna measure 18 inches over here. And I'm not gonna worry at this point about this not being a square piece. And I'm gonna make just a tiny little cut, um, just a big enough cut so that I can see where my 18 inches are is. And then I'm gonna do this. Now I could also do this with the mat, but I am not a mat. Um, I only use the lines on my ruler. So um, I'm gonna lay this up like this so that I can see where I'm removing. And I do have a straight edge up here. So I'm gonna line this line on the ruler. Can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay, I'm gonna line that edge and then I'm just gonna zip right up here, removing my binding piece. So there is that binding piece and I'm just gonna set that aside for now. And so now um, to cut my 18 inches, I'm gonna go ahead so that I can keep the rotary cutter in my right hand. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my piece around carefully and I will align my ruler so that I have my 18 inches here. So here is my 18 inches for my base square. And I'm going to cut that off there. I'm going to fold this little line up here. And then I'm going to, again, use my ruler like Grandpa old carpenter square. And I would cut. Now let me show you if you have the big mama or if you have a large square, for those people, we don't want to um, leave that out. So if you have the large square, you would just lay it down on here at 18 inches, which makes it super easy to do, as you can see. Um, so tools matter, as we all know. Um, and then I can zip up my cut right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have the tools to do this one, um, then you would just do that. So now I'm ready to take that. Okay, so now we have our first 18 inch square. Now I'm going to show you. Um, and if, yeah, if your back quarters are just slightly under 18 inches, it's okay. So if you didn't get through all six layers, right. we're gonna square it up again. So if your back quarters were a little bit shy, that's gonna be okay as well, so. Yeah, so if I come down here and I see that this guy is in here by, you know, like it's looking like right here, um, Gosh, yeah, yeah, so it's like, oh, it's not quite that big. You're fine. No don't worries. Panic, no yeah. worries. Again, we chose a pattern that had, uh, we don't need any more stress in our life. This is, <laughs> this is so much fun, ladies. It's more fun than a quilter should have. Um, and so now we're going to cut that diagonal piece. And the reason that this is important, because a lot of you are probably thinking, why don't they just make big half square triangles? Well, the reason that we don't is because we want as much variety in sewing these. And this is the uh, Jen's collection that she started using Fantasy. So here you can see the same piece of light. So the reason we're having you cut this bias, um, the diagonal piece, and switch out is so that you get the most variety when you're sewing your base triangles back together. Do you under, does Nelly have any questions about that? Is that clear as mud? <laughs> No, and so you're still you're still cutting on six layers right now. I'm yes. still cutting on six layers because okay. I'm going to cut. Yeah, so maybe you you want to always cut on at least uh, four is really you know fine. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, you want to at least cut on three or four layers at a time. Um, so now I've lined my 45, which is not that all that important, but you can see the 45 degree angle on the ruler. But now if you come up to this corner, you'll see that even my ruler is not long enough to cut there. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, so you're going to start your cut and, um, and then you just cut up here like so. All right. You stop, don't move your ruler and you fold that up. So now it leaves me in a lot an edge to align to. And I slide my ruler right up here. Oh, my piece is crooked. Um, I slide my ruler right up to there. And I moved my piece, so wouldn't you know it? 
uh, align your pieces back and then just continue cutting right up that triangle piece, okay? So this gives you a nice square edge. And if I was doing this and not trying to move it for the camera, I would of course do that. So do you understand? Because my ruler wasn't long enough, I didn't want to hand cut my corner. So it just allowed me using it um, as using my square. So I cut, then I folded this up, slid my ruler to the corner, aligned and recut. So now I have my pieces ready to exchange. Tony, so how do you, you how are you maintaining that 45 degree line? Well, it's gonna automatically maintain because when you slide your ruler up, as long as you are keeping it flush against this, Nellie, okay. it's gonna stay. So if you look down here, it's gonna be the same distance here to here. So really the 45 is only for the very first cut that you, you line up. And like I said, if you're yeah. on your corner, if your ruler is hitting the corner of your here, I can turn my little guy. If your ruler is aligning on this corner, you know, you don't really even have to worry. So if they don't have the 45, it's okay. Um, see, I could line okay. it over here. Um, see here, and I don't have the 45, but as long as I know where my corner is, okay? So um, right. now Jen is gonna get ready to go and sew some pieces together. Yep. So, so you would take the a light and a dark yeah, and you would, so I sew would rotate them, these down, place them together. Rotate these down. Now remember that we have bias edges here, ladies. So you don't want to be flinging these over your shoulder and having the kids carry them and stretch them for you until after they're sewed. <laughs> so now we'll just put these right sides together and then I'll lay one over there for Jen to get ready to sew. And I'll talk a little bit more about the um Moving the fingers are in the way. Oh, my fingers are in the way. Oh. <laughs> um, and so a little bit more about this quilt. This is the Canyon quilt. Um, and it is uh, going to release. Uh, oh, I should have had my dates, Nellie. We actually have shop kits to start shipping in May because that was our original plan. And it is 16 and a half inch blocks. And hold on, I got to get the step stool. Beautiful. So you can see the little kind of hidden star block up in there. And okay, so Jen's ready to start sewing. Oh, sorry to move so fast. Okay. Okay, we've done a little pre-sewing. I've started one, so I wanted to show you guys the chain stitching so that you have, once you cut all your um, triangles out, that you can just be real fast. So I've started this one, and now I'm going to, since this is a bias edge, I want to hold it up. And oh, wait, real... let me back up. Okay, show that again. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing this next one, but I, this is a bias edge on, on the inside here. So I want to hold up that so that it feeds evenly and it's not pulling when I start to sew. What happens if it pulls, Tony and Jenny? Um, well, it'll just have, you'll have a little bit of buckle in your, uh, in the center. So you might, after you sew one, you might check and make okay. sure that, um, that it's not, that there isn't any, we really, we have not had a problem with that. It's gone very smoothly. Um, and mainly because you're not, you're, you're moving, you're cutting your pieces and then you're going directly to the sewing machine with them, which is kind right. of how we have set this up. Um, and so I don't know why, but it's, Suddenly, it's gathering up. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Um, I, I cleaned and oiled my machine. I guess I shouldn't have done it today. <laughs> okay. So we have some of these all we, sewn and ready. We to don't want it to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't want this. I probably needed to rethread and re yeah. my machine. So... <laughs> So something, yeah, if it looks like this, rethread your, oh, sorry, I forgot what I was doing. Uh, yeah, you don't want to have a, a gathered piece. I don't, there must just be a thread caught someplace, so we're fine. Um, okay, so now we're ready to, um, to go to the pressing, and I'm going, sorry, Nellie, too fast. <laughs> so we'll show you this canyon quilt. If you're, if you're all not in love with this canyon quilt by the end of this uh, deal, then we're gonna have done something wrong. But so here we go and I'll pass this off to Jen. Okay, so some um, pressing tips to show you. Um, so standard is you will press to the dark side of your triangle with this. 
Um, one of the other great things is that the, the pieces don't um, usually come back to meet each other. So one thing that uh, for all of you that have had me in your store know that I'm a real stickler on a really a flat press seam, not having what I call this accordion fold. Can you see that? How when you, um, it looks like it's pressed fine, but then when you go to, to cut or to use the rule, you can see that there's this little accordion pleat that's in there. So I'll show you how to avoid that. Um, so on that small piece, you would just pick up this, once again, using the edge of your iron, this uh, little throat plate of your iron. It's there for a reason, ladies. And you just take that and let it just slide and glide there. And now you can see that I have this half square and you can see how flat and beautiful that seam is. And if you think about running from the heat, that's exactly what the fabric wants to do too. So your first thing would be probably just to take this and you would either press it from the back, but you'd open this up and you'd do this. So I want you to hold it up hold it up in your hand and this works for strip sets or anything that you're doing and then you're just going to take the plate of it's nice and hot and then I just lay that down and you can see how beautifully that then pressed and you want to be sure you get clear to your corners here after it's laying flat and so now we have our large half square triangle um, and sewn beautifully. If you do have problems, so what I mean by if it's, if you're stretching your bias, once you press this, you may have, it, it may kind of look a little bit like that. Um, and if that's the case, what I would recommend doing is, um, I should have my Mr. Bottle, but I've got my big, my big one, is just give it a little uh, press with some uh, water and leave it and steam it steam into it. submission. Yep. Press that back <laughs> in. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a great tip. Steam yes. into submission. That's, a That's right. <laughs> Sometimes when you get those thick connecting seams, you just have to steam them into submission. But after you steam it into submission, you want to leave it lay until it cools slightly. So don't steam it into submission and then pick it up and flop it over. Um, and so now Jen <laughs> is going to show you sub cutting. So let me get rid of these. So we have just about uh, finished the steps that you're going to do um, today in your step one of the serendipity sew along. All right. And I'll tell you a little bit about how this quilt happened. Um, we actually kind of just wanted to come up with an idea in, um, in piecing. I guess I can turn this around and talk to you guys. Well, maybe. Oh, there I am. And there's Jen. <laughs> there's Jen. <laughs> So we're getting ready. So this quilt happened when we um, we were putting these blocks together and we just wanted to sit down and started playing one day. And we love the name serendipity, which means happy accident. And when we got these blocks done, it's exactly what we had. We found that we could take two fat quarters, sew them together, cut them apart, put the angles back together and come up with this block that could be done in many different layouts. So that's how serendipity came together. So now Jen's ready to start cutting. So I'll turn this around and get on my steps. Oh, it's too fast. Step stool. Okay. So step two after they're all sewn together. Okay. So you want to, we want to go ahead and square up our half square triangle. So I am going, and we're going to square these up to 16 and a half inches. And so I am going to, to make the pattern sure. And show them what step we're on in there. Well, yeah. So, so we're going to, we're on this step here and we're going to square to 16 and a half inches. Which is why we said, if your fat quarter doesn't measure a full 18, we've allowed for that to happen. So you can see I'm well within a 16 inch square oh, here. here. Go back around, let me show Okay, again. so I, I'm well, I have much to Lower, trim off. Slower. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Fast hands. <laughs> <laughs> so see what she's showing you here is that at 16 and a half we have plenty down here at the bottom so we can see see we're at 17 so we've got a good quarter inch laying outside the ruler up here and we'll I'm trim these two sides. sides and i've got my um half square triangle seam like lined up on my 45 degree angle here and i am going to go ahead and make my first two cuts i'm going to go up one side and then I'm going to go here, always with the ruler or the blade next to my ruler. 
Okay, so I've got my pieces here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my ruler off and rotate. Let's see. I don't know which side. There you that. go. <laughs> rotate only once. Once. <laughs> and I'm going to align. Okay, my... let me. Okay, let me come down close. So. See you where she's see at 16, 16 and a half. I've got my corner, yep. got my uh, 45, 45 on there. lined up on the edge here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make my last two um, square ups. here. Yeah. Because if you, especially if you're using cottons and you bought a fat quarter pack that were cut 18 inches in the store and then you washed and dried those, um, they're probably only going to measure 17 and a half and you're still okay. Um, so um, again, it's a very, very forgiving. Okay, so I'm going to take my Big Mama ruler off and I'm going to grab the six and a half um, by 24 and a half inch. And before I start cutting, I am going to place my um, very big, important big half square triangle with you need to have the dark corner on the lower left or lower right hand corner here. Otherwise, your pieces will not go back together um, in the cur to make the pattern in the end quilt. Okay, so once again, very important when you align these before cutting your segments um, and show them on the pattern where that is, just okay. so they can follow that along. So we're going to be doing this step four here. And with the dark on the lower right-hand side. Okay. And I'm going to make my first six and a half inch cut. So I'm going to align, my ruler is six and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to align the edge here. Oh, wait, wait, okay. Align the, that Align edge. the edge so I have against my, you know, nice plumb square here. And then I'm gonna make my first cut and I'm just going to go ahead and zip down all the way here. So I've got my first piece, which has just the little triangle on the bottom part of this long rectangle. I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to go back over to my piece and I need to make my second six and a half inch cut. Line it up and then go ahead and cut. And then I have my six and a half inch cut and then what's left over is my three and a half inch cut. So I'm just going to to keep these all stacked the same as I um, do the rest of the cutting of my so, half square triangle. So she'll just stack these up and keep yeah. this half square triangle block all together. Okay. So okay, question, question, ladies, you would not batch cut these, right? You'd cut these one at a time. You really should cut these one at a time. Um, because you can't nest those seams together. Um, if you're really confident, you probably could cut them more than once, but um, I would it probably- could make a difference though if, if this, you're- How you're, it comes together yeah, right there. Right, because um, we're gonna be cutting these into smaller parts into step two. So these need to be really nice angles for okay, to everything. Do. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would only single layer these. So when you can stack cut is when you're doing your base in the beginning, Nellie. But then I would, um, mm -hmm. I would recommend this to be just a little bit more um, so that you know you're very accurate on that. Got it. Okay, do you want to see that again or are we good? No, I think we're good. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so then okay. the subcut does not happen until the next part of the pattern places, right? Right, this is step one. We're all done with part one. And then next week we will show you part two which is going to be cutting your, your um, cuts that I showed you today into smaller parts. We're gonna work our way back over here to the quilt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get, the, we'll get our little stack up here if, if anybody has any last minute questions for us. Yes, if any questions, feel free to ask. It's a very easy, it looks like it's like a very beginner friendly easy block to get very interesting you know you get your two half square triangles you have two rectangles and the six and a half inch square so it seems like you're not just working with one big unwieldy block the whole time um right but just it's right, one block right. to get but, a good yeah. variety yeah it's very it's very simple it uses very basic um quilting tools and um yeah i feel like anyone can accomplish this 
Okay. And that's what your patterns are all about too, breaking down more difficult blocks that look more difficult than they actually are into simpler parts. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We love to take a piece of fabric and see how many ways we can cut it up into um, how and, many pieces. Yeah. <laughs> and also use tricks with color placement to make things appear um, harder than they really are. So. Yeah. So this will all come back together um, very nicely. We sh kind of showed you the, the layouts that you'll have. Um, so just always keep in mind that um, you could do this out of pink and blue, if that's, or, you know, yellow and green, if that's your school colors and use all yellows on one side and all greens on another side. You don't actually have to have a, a various of color families. You know, it'd be a great uh, quilt to use up those fat quarters that you caught or that you bought maybe with school colors for your kids or something and you just want to have a project to do that's fast and easy this would be perfect um perfect way to do that because the blocks are going to end up about what 14 and a half inches or so oh, yes. when they're done i think they're so yeah or six yeah so <laughs> i don't yeah. know that's part yeah. two <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's going to be a nice large block um to do so we'll be uh, we'll be working on finishing our step ones um, also, and then um, you'll get to see Jen's quilt coming out together in the fantasy line as this progresses on, and mine coming together in the canyon and um, Nature's Lodge group. And we'll try to get the Nature's Lodge is in a shop right now, but we'll try to get that quilt next time to hang up behind us so you can see um, that quilt. And then the very last week, um, if it's okay, we'll hang up the fantasy quilt um, to, to show. So we'll... Um, We'll, we'll get you inspired with color and famine. And Nellie, I love your color wall behind you. Like Jen and I are really jealous. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big backdrop nose. <laughs> yeah. It's like, did she take a screenshot and put behind her? That's fabulous. This is you the can see collected my sewing room right now. So <laughs> yeah. you've collected for a while. But, right? Okay, so everyone, um, we hope you had fun and you know, a long time. <laughs> Um, uh, stay tuned for more. Um, and again, this is our first try at going live. So if you have a question, comments, feedback, we are all ears. We want to hear what you want to see. And uh, Tony, Jen, thank you so much um, for spending this time with us. We'll be back next Tuesday with a live video. And uh, part two of the pattern will release on Monday on Facebook. That's right here. Um, and Tony and Jenny are also preparing a great giveaway for the end. So stay with us and um, we'll be sharing more. So thank you and uh, we'll see you all soon. All right. All right.